morning. Uh, my name's Nick, one of the co-founders, co-CEOs of Plated, Plated.com. And I'm going to talk about getting a uh, physical goods business off the ground. There we go. So kind of set, set a bit of a stage here. Um, we raised almost $30 million over the last two years. A uh, bunch of folks who've been here today uh, spoke today. Mike Gough from Founder Collective is on our board. Taylor Green from Lair, who spoke earlier, uh, one of our guys as well. Um, almost all New York City based funds, except for Formation 8, which is out west. Um, you know, we kind of made it through this point where we're going to die tomorrow, right? That's what the first two years really felt like. It was, holy crap, that refrigerator filled with kale is going to explode. And, you know, I might physically die tomorrow and the business might die as well. So we're kind of through that, that um, you know, Crucible, um, and I think, oh, that's the wrong direction. So I, I think what, what I'm gonna try and do here today is, is give you guys a little bit of the inside baseball on how, how we went from idea to, to getting to a place where, where uh, we're moving towards being a real big business. So our mission, the reason why we started this was we saw some, some major inefficiencies, huge amounts of waste in, in the food industry more broadly, and we wanted a better service in, in our lives. We also saw the anorexia epidemic on one end of the spectrum, the obesity, diabetes epidemic on another, and no matter who you are, you, I would make the generalization, are <laughs> unhappy with the food in your life, or at least would prefer it to be more convenient, more affordable, and higher quality. And that's what we're doing. Our mission is to help people eat better and live better. So quickly, how, how it works, what do we do? Homepage, we, do, we have a different menu every week, seven different options you can choose from. You choose the number of portions you want. Mmm, look at that butter-based steak. You guys just had lunch, but hopefully get the mouth watering a little bit anyway. Choose what you want. Um, Tell the, the story around the ingredients and, and uh, our, our chef selection. Um, everything is antibiotic free, hormone free, all seafood is domestically and sustainably sourced. Check out and uh, then the magic happens. We send, we send everything directly to your door pre-portioned so you can cook a fantastic meal at home in about 30 minutes. And the, our, our insight there was we want to cook, it's just a pain in the ass it's inefficient, spent hours in the grocery store, walk out of Whole Foods spending $80 to cook for two, and 30% of what I bought goes in the trash at the end of the week. So we can do that better, and that's what we're doing. We're shipping hundreds of thousands of meals a month. Uh, we've got about 200 employees across the country now. Uh, so things are, things are working. There's demand out there, we're scaling it up. But it all started back on June 7, 2012. That's my kitchen, that's my wife, Nimi. Um, I was working on Wall Street, hating myself, hating my job, getting fat and nasty, eating seamless multiple times a day. And um, I'd come out of the Marine Corps and I, I believed in you know, doing, doing things in a, in a mission-driven way and Wall Street just utterly sucked my soul. So left Wall Street, met up with Josh, who was a buddy of mine from business school, and we said, guns up, let's do this. So that's my kitchen table in the foreground. You can't see it, but that's where, where we said, let's, let's start the biz. Nimi said, you're crazy, my wife. Um, and this was our first, our first landing page. Got it up in about four days. We pulled some, uh, some, non, some, some copyrighted stuff we didn't pay for from Corbis, sorry. Uh, got a $9.99 domain from GoDaddy. And um, we were, we were you know, up and running, at least on the front end. The back end is a different story, right? So I had to go find a place where we could pack basil and salmon and all kinds of good stuff. So I took a tour of the, of the five boroughs. It's a nice young lady out in Queens. Uh, we did not end up using that space. We needed some money though. Neither of us comes from, from wealth. We had burnt through a lot of our savings working on something else together. We had 401ks we liquidated, IRAs we liquidated, credit cards were getting maxed out, and no one would give us money. We were, we were two, two dudes who wanted to build a food, e-commerce, consumer-facing business, and we knew nothing about food, nothing about e-commerce, and nothing about consumer businesses. 
So we knocked on about 150 doors, got about 149 no's. The one yes was from my dad who gave us a few hundred bucks to keep the lights on in my kitchen. Uh, but we knew we needed real money to get this business off the ground. So fortuitously, it's a longer story. It'll come out in a memoir someday. We, uh, we made our way out to Silicon Valley, met a bunch of former Israeli uh, IDF entrepreneurs who'd sold multiple businesses for hundreds of millions of dollars. We went to their kid's uh, birthday party. You can see the kid in the foreground, jumped on a bouncy castle. And they said, yeah, we like you. Here's the here's $400,000. And that was how we started the business. So we got the money. Let's go build a proper fridge. That's my man Pedro in Queens in the old Guinness bottling factory. We uh, found a month to month rent. For those of you who know New York City real estate, that's kind of unheard of. Got uh, about 2,000 square feet where I built a fridge. So a bunch of siding, metal siding, metal beams. Um, there's Josh and me back in July 2012. So Josh, the Georgia Tech engineer, he had this brilliant idea that we could take you know, 24,000 BTU industrial air conditioners, stack them up, take some aftermarket adapters that deer hunters in deep Georgia use to keep their kill cold, and uh, retrofit the air conditioners to make a fridge, and uh, didn't really work. So um, we did one round of packing and the room wouldn't get below 60 degrees, still using dine-in fresh boxes there. I did the design in my living room and we bought uh, about $10,000 worth of cornstarch based foam that ended up dissolving in, in transit. Um, so you know our, our friends, the guinea pigs that signed up early on, we get this box of rotting cornstarch and putrid salmon. So, <laughs> we need another space. So the same landlord, this guy, Alan Dern, God bless his soul, he uh, said, I got this place in Greenpoint. Uh, there's not really much going on there, but uh, if you want to go set up shop, you can. So we did. And uh, this is Keith. Keith is our first external employee. These are uh, our, our, well, I should say first management employee. This is Rupa, who is our first real employee. She's now leading a team in our Bronx Fulfillment Center. She's been with us. She's our longest employee. And Keith is our longest uh, management level employee. He's been with us for uh, two years and now runs all of our food supply chain. But you know, these are the <laughs> these are the early terrible days getting started. There was no, you know, clearly no refrigerator in there. So went out to Jersey, found a refrigerated cargo container, uh, hooked it up to to the wall. And uh, we were running out of a refrigerated cargo container. Had to run it on this diesel, diesel gen set for, for a couple weeks until we got the wiring put in. So every six hours I was going from my house on West 14th Street out to Greenpoint, Brooklyn to make sure that the, uh, the diesel machine was filled up so that the, uh, this, this 40 foot cargo container didn't explode. Uh, you can also notice that this is on the East River. This is a beautiful spot, great Manhattan view, river here. Um, that's nice to look at, but October 29th, 2012. Do the, do the relaunch of the website, plated.com. We found this internet troll in the UK who sold us, uh, sold us that domain at a, at a bargain value. We, we structured this call option type structure so that we could do a monthly payment with the cash outlay at the back end so we didn't need to pay the cash up front to get the domain because we still didn't really have much money. Um, so we got the domain found this guy named Hipster Chris who wore cut-off jean shorts and a flat bim, brim hat and a cut-off flannel shirt and rode a fixed speed bike. And he did our branding for like $4,000. We're still using it today. He did a great job. So site's done, we're ready to rock. New plated.com, unveil it to the world October 29th. And Hurricane Sandy hits. So worst day of internet traffic in the history of the Northeast US and Lest you forget, we're on the East River. So this 10,000 pound cargo container filled with salmon and kale, which is attached to the wall by a power cord about the size of my pinky, gets picked up and pulled out. And the only reason why our whole business didn't float away into the sea is because of that power cord. <laughs> so we're basically effed. And um, we're running out of money. No one's ordering our stuff because our boxes are arriving putrid and rotting and realized we need to like figure out how to get some more money and get some more customers. We didn't really know what we were doing. I, I thought like, okay, Facebook. People say Facebook works for marketing. So 
found this image of like a really hot chick and said, eat food, and put it up on Facebook. And no big surprise, it didn't work. So what else can we do? How can we drive customers? How can we get investment? I reached out to everyone in my network and said, does anyone know anyone in media? And I got like four responses, like three of them were crap. One of them was, yeah, I know this guy that writes for the Wall Street Journal, great. So I sat down with him for coffee for 15 minutes. Not a very good interview. I thought it was, you know, that was the end of that. Later that day, he writes back to me, emails and says, I want to write an article on you guys on, on the Digits Journal. Uh, send me a photo. Boom, that day it's up. We start getting inbound phone calls, one of which is from a guy named Andrew McCollum. Andrew McCollum, who are you? Um, well, I was roommates with Mark Zuckerberg at Harvard. I really like what you're doing. I uh, helped found Facebook and I want to invest. Okay, awesome. So Andrew helped keep us alive. The year starts, we move to our buddy's Indian e-commerce um, company that sells saris and Bollywood posters. We crammed the whole business of six people into a back room. There's Josh trying on a uh, kurta. We then get into Techstars. Hi, Alex. Alex wasn't in charge of Techstars at the time, but Eugene and Nicole were, and uh, those guys really accelerated, helped accelerate our growth going into 2013, so 18 months ago now. We're doing you know, hundreds of orders, uh, thousands, of, you know, hundreds a week at that point. We're borrowing space in, in Brooklyn, from a, uh, from a diet delivery service. We're uh, you know, coming out of Techstars, got some good momentum, doing some you know, relatively reasonable revenue per month. We've got an army of interns, and we're you know, slinging plated meals out of the back of a rented refrigerated truck at Techstars demo day. <coughs> so two days ago, now in real time, we moved to our first official office. We've moved nine times, our ninth move. Uh, this is our fifth office down in the financial district after Techstars, we moved down there for a couple months. Then we moved to this pretty wacky uh, space on um, Houston and Broadway. It's the old Jim Henson Muppet Studio. Just beautiful kitchen, didn't have to do a single thing. About 25 people in the company. Um, things are starting to, to turn up and to the right. And then shit hits the fan. We had uh, investors lined up. We were gonna take on a growth round of capital. They'd signed a term sheet. They were supposed to wire it, and they backed out around this time, actually like almost to a day last year. They totally backed out of the process. We had 10 days of cash in the bank. Had to fire 20% of our team. Had to turn to our current investors who bailed us out and kept us alive. Basically worked through Christmas and New Year's. Kept the business alive. Went on Shark Tank <laughs> April this year. And um, dude, that shit moves the needle. It was awesome. <laughs> so did more revenue in the month following Shark Tank than the whole history of the business prior, cumulatively. And that allowed us to go out and raise our July round. Um, that brings you kind of up to date. So got a bunch of time left on the clock. If anyone wants to ask questions, Put together this code for you guys if you want to try out the product. Plated.com. That's uh, it's getting the physical goods business off the ground. Ain't pretty. about now it seems like you've been through uh, you know such a roller coaster what are you worried about moving forward well I, I had a little baby girl seven months ago I worry about her more than anything but uh, <laughs> we hired a senior management team post this last fundraise and now it's about setting strategic vision you know, making sure we're, we have the right priorities making sure we have the right executives in place and just you know asserting pressure um, to hit our goals so it's, you know, it's moved beyond my ability to influence anything directly, and I'm looking for operational leverage throughout the company. Um, it's a related question, but what, what has your day-to-day become -day now that you're not filling the generator and, and even setting the strategy necessarily, what do you do? Speak at conferences like this. 
Um, I do speak at a, at a fair number of conferences. It's good to get the brand out. I love telling the story. I'm passionate about it, if you can't tell. Um, a lot is also hiring, firing, um, you know, culture. Um, you know, some people outsource their culture or think it's just going to develop organically, but we're spending a lot of time internally making sure that we have the right people, the right process, the right focus, the right you know, level of grit and determination. Um, so that's that's what I spend a lot of time on these days. And investors, keeping, keeping people happy. Um, what is your competition? And like, how do you make sure you guys are, you know, different and more desirable than they are? Yeah, so we think about competition, if, if you guys have, have read uh, Clay Christensen's Innovator's Dilemma, Innovator Solution books, he talks about a customer's job to be done. So if you put on the consumer hat, what does the customer want? Why are they hiring us versus someone else? And when we think about that, the job to be done is getting a meal on the table that they can feel good about at an affordable price in a reasonable amount of time. So the whole competitive set we look at is competing for that job to be done. And for us, that's quick service restaurants like Chipotle, it's organic and natural grocers like Whole Foods, and then it's the takeout ecosystem like Seamless. And we're playing at that intersection, chipping away share and making sure that our product works for, works for customers when they're, when they're looking for that job. But we focus on personalization and, and super high quality ingredients as well. So that's the ingredient standards around antibiotic free, hormone free, domestically and sustainably sourced, as local as possible, as seasonal as possible. And that takes a lot of work. It, it's, it takes a lot of investing in the supply chain, it takes a lot of investing in the food. You know, Food ain't cheap. Uh, yes, sir. I've seen what a lot of uh, other companies are trying to do is So how do you, how do you, uh, uh, I, I've um, met a lot of companies that's trying to do what you have done. I mean, I live in Park Slope. I already saw a couple of companies that went down. We have front stalls and all, uh, store fronts and all that. So how do you uh, uh, keep your business model relevant? I mean, obviously you're doing good, you have investors and all that, but it is, uh, you know, it is a pretty competitive business. Yeah, so I mean, v VC money is, is one thing, right? Like it's, it's great to, to take in capital, but what really matters is, is customer demand and making sure you're providing something that people want. Um, and we, we know there's a massive demand out there. We've only started to chip away at the tip of the iceberg. Um, so, so for us, it's a question of how do we build capacity to increase the economies of scale as, as we scale and to continue to, to provide a phenomenal product um, as, as we hit the next order of magnitude of, of growth. So you know, getting, getting this business off the ground was an immense amount of work. It's a complex business. We've got customer service, analytics, culinary, supply chain in, in four different markets, uh, you know, the financing, uh, the, the accounting, multiple tech teams focus on everything from data to operations to e-commerce to QA. So there's just a lot going on. Um, and that's that's what's defensible. There are a lot of people that have tried this and it's freaking hard. Hey, my name is uh, Saul, founder of Miner. Hey. <laughs> uh, just wondering, um, what's your one or more than one takeaway from Techstars, from those programs, whether it's Techstars, Five Minute Startup, Y Combinator, et cetera. Um, is there one thing you could say that, you know, that they did for you? Is it network? Is it, is it, you know, just what they actually taught you, you know, that you didn't know before, or that you do it again for, for company X that's in a different space, for example? Yeah, so shout out to Alex and, and Techstars and a, and, a, and a plug for you guys. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in it. You know, we were a little bit later stage when we when we went in, and we you know vacillated a bit about whether we wanted to do it. And I'm so glad we did. You know, three main reasons why: one is investor access, two is mentor and advisor access, and then three is just taking the the operating tempo from your team up up to, to the varsity level. Oh, oh. So one last question. Or? Right here. Uh, right here. So. Um, can you talk about how you think about um, expansion to other cities? Right here, I'm, I'm in the back. Oh, hey, yep. I'm Rob Gow. Um, 
can you talk about sort of expanding to other cities, um, maybe you know beyond New York City, and how you kind of look at that strategically? Yeah, so that was part of our strategy from way early on. Um, we we use primarily digital marketing channels, which are geographically agnostic. So we started marketing, you know, nationwide essentially as soon as we started putting any dollars into the marketing funnel. So we now serve ninety five percent of the country. Uh, we've got four fulfillment centers, one in California, one in Chicago, one in the Bronx, one in Miami. Uh, and we work with about 15 different logistics providers so that we can you know, get, get the product out to, to the, right, the right folks at the right time, the right service level agreements. So doing this in a big way has been part of our vision from way early on. All right. Thank you. Cool. Here for Nick. Thank you, Nick. Thank you.